Remitelli, a Ghanaian tech talent startup that has partnered with Pathways, a foundation focused on expanding opportunities for young athletes, has announced a $314,824 investment as part of the Pathways project. Now, the Pathways project signed with the foundation uh, intends to provide players with new opportunities to develop their tech skills if their football careers do not turn out as they had hoped. Uh, led by Jeremy Frimpong, a Ghanaian Dutch professional footballer for Bayer Leverkusen and Pathways founder, the funding will help Remotelli facilitate its goals of employing a million people by 2030. Electric cars. The Ethiopian government has chosen to solely permit electric vehicles into the nation, prohibiting gasoline and diesel-powered automobiles, according to a statement made in Addis Ababa by Alemu Sime, who is the Minister of Transport and Logistics for Ethiopia. He made the remark hailed by many uh, on the continent after presenting the ministry's six-month performance report to the House of People's Representatives or Ethiopia's Parliament's Urban Development and Transport Standing Committee. The East African Nation's Logistics Master Plan, which calls for the thoughtful use of green transport, was also uh, mentioned, uh, as the minister said. Uh, a new wallet for direct financial services on WhatsApp called Chat Wallet has been launched by South African Absa Bank. The release of the new wallet comes after its chat bank feature was unveiled in July 2018 on Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp. Absa reported that since introducing the chat bank platform, it's touched over uh, 10,000 consumers. Uh, Bade Adishon is, is the CTO, Chief Technology Officer for Binum uh, Development Center. He joins us now to discuss. Good morning to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. Happy New Year. Um, starting with the skills part, because that's where you play in, what do you make of what um, Remotelli is trying to do in terms of giving football players, athletes, skills they can fall back on? It's a very welcome development because ultimately uh, the tech industry is really large and it's still growing, growing exponentially. And one of the things that we need are skills, right? So if we, we find young people who try to make it in football, they couldn't make it, and then they get trained in a part of technology. It could be the technical side, it could be the business side, but the fact that they are getting new opportunities to become global stars, maybe not in football, but in the field of technology. It's a welcome development. So you are in this space. Are you training? What are you guys doing at Binom? Is it across Nigeria, the African continent? Tell us about what your program. So it's actually across the world. It's Bincom Dev Center. And what we do is talent development. Uh, three key pillars, lens skills, gain experience, and then gain exposure in the field of technology. What we're looking at is also that gap to say there's such a huge opportunity for tech talents all over the world. But the challenge is that nobody is looking for beginners, nobody is looking for newbies. People are looking for people that can solve problems for them. And they can only solve problems for them when they are the intermediate or the expert level in the field of technology. So what Bincom Dev Center does is to create a platform for people to get into tech and get to that level of being an intermediate level person that the world is looking for, or an expert level person that the world is looking for. What, what, what do you need to develop tech skills? Do you, do you need a background in it or can you come in cold? What's been your experience yeah. with what you've seen so far? So you can come in cold. The key thing is you must be passionate and very interested in learning. That's the key thing, right? You, must, you will need the opportunities to learn. You will need the opportunities for the experience and for the exposure. But the key thing is, are you ready to invest those hours? We're talking 40 to 60 hours every week, right? For you to become somebody that can be reckoned with in the field of technology. We're talking about sleepless nights, whether in the technical side of things or the business side of things. Are you ready to invest that? That's what you would need. You gotta do the work. You <laughs> have to do the work. Um, what do you make of school curriculums right now, public and private school? Are they, are, they, are they gonna catch up? Are they far behind? So we need a lot of help in the public part of things, right? And I'm, I'm very impressed with one of the things that the current Minister of Digital Economy is doing, uh, Boson, uh, where they're trying to create tech clubs within secondary schools. Fantastic initiative. But the curriculum itself is the problem. A lot of times, the curriculum we're using today is what we used 40 years ago, right? It's the same thing that I was used to be, that I was taught with, that other people are being taught in this year. Many things have changed since then. Pluto is no longer a planet. A lot of things have changed. So the curriculum itself needs to be developed. Private schools are doing better. Private schools are a bit more forward thinking, right? But let's not go to the old structure of how education is done, right? That's also a problem. 
But in terms of the curriculum, it needs improvement, particularly in our public schools. I'm going to circle back to this now, but uh, on electric vehicles, what do you make of uh, what Ethiopia is trying to do in, in banning fossil fuel cars and wanting to focus on EVs? Um, welcome development as well, because what they are ultimately trying to do is to improve uh, development of cars within their economy, right? They've been pushing a lot of policies along those lines over a period of time, trying to attract manufacturers to bring their engineering, their manufacturing and everything to their economy. So fantastic development. Electric cars are the future, but the truth is we are a little behind in Africa. Our infrastructure is not yet there. Right? It would get there over time, but we are not yet there yet. So what they are doing is, yes, fine, we can start building fossil cars, fossil fuel cars, and then over a period of time, they will start switching to also building electric cars. We should be looking at that in our country, Nigeria. As well. Okay, well, good stuff. <laughs> so back to the, what you're trying to do in building skills. Yeah. Can we one day have the workforce and skill set to be able to build these electric vehicles and the in charging infrastructure uh, that we need? The answer is yes, but it's not the lowest hanging fruit, and I must be honest there. So within the software industry, within the technology industry, there are many aspects where you don't need anything but a phone, a smartphone, for you to be able to learn. If we really want to develop our hardware and engineering aspect of things, there's a lot more we would need in terms of infrastructure that is just not there at the moment. So your question is, can we get there? The answer is yes. Is that what we should be focusing on first? Maybe not, because there's a big opportunity for the low-hanging fruit, uh, software developers, business analysts, product managers, all of those, and there's a huge opportunity there globally. That's where I would focus on first as an economy, and then over a period of time, we can also continue diversifying, building engineers, building uh, people that can do other things, or if we do all of them in parallel, even better. How long do you think that's gonna take? The time frame is, sounds like it's going to be a long time, or can it be accelerated? It can be accelerated. It can be accelerated, but it requires national focus. So, for example, in my company, we're doing about 1,000 people a year, right? But then you're looking at an economy that has over 10 million people graduating Right, and so that's a lot in terms of what the gap. So that's one company doing that. We're doing fantastically well. But then, if the nation decides to say we're going to build our workforce, India has done something similar. Singapore has done something similar. We've seen that happen. Singapore over about thirty years or there about. India even shorter. So Nigeria can do it in a short time frame. Well, uh, uh, the the quality of graduates that we have, the, 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 the inflow of folks that are coming into being calm, that you are training. Mm -hmm. What's your assessment? Because, you know, there's, there's, there's some worry, you know, with the fact that, you know, when you look at in different companies, the, you know, interns you get in and mm -hmm. the, the quality of the, I've been able to assess this, I've been able to, you yeah. know, yeah, well, how, how do you, how do you, I'm trying to be delicate it, here. <laughs> but how do you, it, how, it, how do you it, it's a that? challenge, right? There are a couple of schools where when their graduates come, Right. What they are looking for is the experience, being able to do real life projects, being able to learn while doing. But a lot more people have spent four years, even some that do computer science degrees, without knowing anything. Right. So they've crammed and they've dumped it during their tests and exams and so on, but they don't really know anything at all. And so they are starting from scratch. But there are a few, I don't want to name names, but there are two specific ones where when their graduates come, maybe because of the way they are structured, maybe because of their proximity to Lagos and all of that, we see that, oh, they're a little further ahead than the average person, but they still also need that experience and exposure that the platform provides. Aren't you then biased to pick the sharper ones to get them quickly through your program? Or oh, yeah, there's no, there's no, there, there's no, there's no bias there, yeah. right? But the way the program is structured, it's a one to two year program, okay. right? So for people that are faster, they can do that program in a year, but some people may do it in two years. So that's the way we structured it to make sure everybody has a fair chance. Mm, interesting. What about a I got to share something with you. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen an alarming trend where I'm running into interns that don't have, either don't have laptops or just forget them at home, right? <laughs> I, I, I can't live without this machine. I will, I don't want to say I'll die, but if I don't have my laptop, mm -hmm. a part of me is missing and mm -hmm. it is part of my everyday job. I have blurry vision now because I'm staring at this screen every day. What about the equipment side? They, they need to have, are you, 
funding that or is that part of your what, talk, so, talk to us about so that. we have partnership with banks uh, that is able to fund that so if uh, but it's a loan really and it's a little expensive in terms of interest rates but it's there if they need it right um, and then in terms of equipment as well you can actually do a lot on a smartphone today it can be a second-hand smartphone. Yeah. There's a lot of learning that can be done there. It's not the easiest of things. Laptop is better. But if you really want to get into the field, you can with just a, a phone that can browse and has WhatsApp. So that's part of the trading. They also get to learn how to use these uh, machines as well. We don't train them to use those machines. So you have they, to know how to do it before they, you they, get they in. They need to get, know how to use it before they can get in. Oh, so wow. we don't play okay. at that level of yeah. computer literacy. Yeah. We play at the next level to say you already can use a computer. Most young people can, really. We play at the level of we want to get you to become globally attractive. Uh -huh. Yeah. What do you think of the whole jackpot situation? I mean, with all the people you are training, by the way, you guys, how you make money from this? Are you paid a fee or how does it work? Yeah, so we are paid a fee um, by either the participant or in some cases by a company that is help, we are helping to train. Right. Because some companies are looking for staff and so they are able to hire within our own ecosystem. So they pay us in that. In that uh -huh. Okay, so what about the whole, like you mentioned a company now that is sending its staff. The person gets trained, you, yeah. you build them up, and then they move to Canada. I mean, what's, yeah. how, you, how are you seeing that situation? We see that a lot, and we're happy with that. In fact, we have a, a tech visa platform where we help people to actually get access to visas. Why are you doing that? Talk world. about that. Why are you doing that? Because we have to export talent as a country. That's, for me, I'm biased because I'm in technology, but yeah. I feel that's the only way out of the mess that we are in as a nation. Mm. We need to export talent, technology talent and so on. We are just too many individuals for us to only be playing in the local market. Gotcha. What we need to do is ensure that we have enough people in the local market and a lot more people that are playing globally as well. Those playing globally, we should give opportunities for them to train more people. And all of a sudden, we have this ecosystem of highly, highly trained, experts, intermediate, beginners, and then it's a cycle that will keep building up and growing the economy and the nation. What is the logic that they, they, you export the talent and what remittances come back, or what, what's, the, what's the logic here? So um, we want each individual to be the best possible version of themselves. In some cases, you need to have a global exposure to the global market for you to be able to do that. Yes, remittances is good because, yes, for most people, they will remit income back to their family, but that's still just within the, their own small cluster. What needs to happen is for it to become such a big phenomenon, right, that every single person is either being trained or is earning Forex, and that helps as well. So we have people that work remotely, so they work for US companies, UK companies, and so on. So all of that's, that helps. That's the dream, to work for you, <laughs> be in Nigeria, earning foreign exchange. Mr. Abade uh, Adeshimo, the uh, Chief Technology Officer of Bincom Development Center, thank you very much for a very enlightening discussion. I appreciate thank you. It. Thank you.